We're live. Episode number 30, Before the train wreck. How to Dodge a Bullet. How you doing? Good, Rich. I got a, I got a class for you to take. You want to hear about this class? A class? A class. Yeah, this is called Masculinities at Miami. This is at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, which I think is just like six miles or six hours or so from you. So I think you should be able to make it pretty easy. But you can take this class at Miami University and you can unlearn all of your toxic masculinity. You can become like those harmless little fuzzballs in the Gillette commercial. Oh, well, uh, I mean, if I want to become a beta, I certainly know where to go. Don't, don't be all pessimistic. This is legit. And I went to their website okay. and it is it is conducted by the uh, Miami Masculinities Committee under their Women's Center, which of course is under their Gender Studies Department. So I, I don't know, man. I think it's right up your alley. I think you should give it a shot. Is this like one of those places where they teach you to be an Instagram boyfriend and, and take 37,000 <laughs> pictures of your girlfriend so she can post it on, on Instagram and get the validation and attention from other men? I bet you could learn how to do that if you were inclined. Is there a class on that there or or they put one of those plastic dog collars on you like you know earlier <laughs> with the other post where that where that chick put a dog collar on her boyfriend for, for some reason because he was looking yeah i did see that on twitter that looked to me like some that looked like kink to me i think people were taking their kink out in public which i'm all for kink but i'm i'm not all for doing it in public because i don't want to have to explain that stuff to my daughter really yeah it's a little weird it's a little weird yeah. All right, so um, guys, we're back. Uh, a little bit of an absence over about 10 days. Had a little vacation in Mexico, uh, so I'm back a little tanned. And um, we're using this brand new system called uh, StreamYard. Um, so this is the first episode that we've used. It's, it's got a few inter interesting functionalities. So for example, um, if you guys throw a super chat in, I can hit a button over here and it'll show it up on the screen. So not just the chat on the side, but it'll actually show it up on the screen. Um, you know, for questions and stuff. Downside to this right now is I haven't figured out how to get Blog Talk Radio working. So the call-in system will not be working tonight. Um, but what I will do is I will put the uh, join link to the broadcast we're using right now in the chat. And you guys should be able to click and join uh, the live show. Now, you're going to end up in a waiting queue kind of not in the broadcast. I'll have to bring you in to ask the question. So um, we'll try it that way tonight and see how it goes. So the link's there if you guys want to hop on and uh, share an experience or question. But Sean, tonight the show we wanted to do um, kick off on how to dodge a bullet. And apparently we ruined somebody's wedding. You got an email on this? Well, you ruined somebody's wedding. I'm going to blame I, it on you. Okay. No, no. I got, it was, um, how to tell the story. I haven't read this email for a couple of weeks, but I got this email of gratitude from a woman a couple of weeks ago. And she was grateful that uh, one of her cousins or nephews or something had been planning a wedding. And he left his fiance at the altar, essentially, uh, thanks to uh, some of the information that we've been putting out, I guess. Uh, well, let me tell you the story as, as far as I remember it, that this wedding had been planned in great detail and the families from both sides had fly, flown to a city and they were all getting together a week beforehand to put on this big extravagant wedding. And as the families arrived, the groom's family started to notice some red flags in the bride to be. And I don't, I don't know how much detail this lady wants me to share. So I'll just leave it at that. There were some red flags and the men in this young man's family, started to take him aside. And I guess they had read my book. They had probably read um, probably read No More Mr. Nice Guy. But in particular, she mentions our show and how they you know, took him out on some occasions and kind of whispered in his ears, talked about the red flags that they were seeing, mentioned some of the information that they had been gathering from us. And this young man at the last minute decided to cancel the wedding. So he left her at the altar. And uh, this was a bad day for him because like, there's a lot of money invested in this. There's a lot of social pressure to go through this. And when you think about what guys are made of, guys are made to um, march to their death without complaining. And how many guys do we know that march to the altar without complaining, knowing that it's the right th that they think it's the right thing to do and they've been told that it's the right thing to do. So for this kid to, uh, I guess I shouldn't call him a kid, but to disappoint her family and his family and all the and waste all the money that had been spent and deal with the backlash of canceling this wedding at the last minute it was i think a, a pretty bad day for him and i kind of got to thinking about um you know how do i feel about this kid having a really bad day on your account rich and i decided that i feel pretty damn good about it because i'd rather he have a bad day than a bad decade or a bad life so yeah. uh, there you go 
Yeah, I've 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 had a, a few emails like that over the years. Um, usually, it comes from the angry person that got left um, because I'm referenced, uh, you know, as to why they decided to bounce on them, right. um, which is fine. I mean, you know, um, I've been lectured by single mommies as far as why their uh, you know boyfriends have left them, you know, sort of thing. And it's like, well, what do you want me to do? You made some bad choices. Why do I need to take responsibility for it? But um, I think it's a good thing, you know, like you're you're actually able to have some impact and influence in um, guys' lives. And you know, if there's women that benefit from it too and family that benefits, awesome, great. It's you know, like you said, it's 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 better than 10 years of living hell. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of neat that this guy's uh aunt or cousin or whoever she is that she's the one that approached us with this and with with the gratitude that's awesome so um we have a dude waiting to join the stream danny um i think i just hit add to stream so just bear with me i'll do one at a time danny welcome how you doing hey i'm doing great so uh you're the, you're our first uh guest on this uh stream just wanted to throw that out there welcome to, how about that congrats so you've got a a question you want to throw at us for tonight's show? Yeah. So, um, hey, Rich. Hey, Sean. I really enjoy your work. Um, I'm a college student in Indiana. Um, I had a few few questions, but most of it's just going to boil down to one. So here we go. So um, I'm going into my third year uh, as a college student, um, taking charge of my studies, not letting school get in the way of my studies, of course. Um, and I've been uh, experimenting with uh, getting back into game. I hadn't been doing that since high school, got rid of my blue pill conditioning and all that stuff. And um, so I've been getting back into the game and, you know, plates come and go. Recently, I had one plate come and go and I realized that I was getting a little bit attached. So it was bummed about it for about a week and then I got over it. Well, then I realized, well, I shouldn't be getting attached to plates. So what tips do you have to avoid getting attached to plates or short term relationships and things like that? So when you say, what are you doing? Your Come again? What are you saying that you're catching feelings for them? Like you're falling in love sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to throw that at uh, Sean first since, uh, you know, I took the blame of uh, canceling the wedding. So go ahead, Sean. <laughs> well, first of all, plates, you know, you probably missed the show a couple weeks ago. I don't, yeah, I, I don't like really like that word and rich said i was triggered yeah i, I wasn't triggered i don't care what oh, people yeah, do. My, I, I remember that <laughs> yeah, yeah I was, i'm not that. triggered by by people calling each other plates and so forth but um you know my, my thing about that is that if you're going to approach people with disrespect your life's going to get kind of messy i'm not saying you're being disrespectful but you're speaking about them in a way that you're speaking these are human beings right these are ladies that you have gotten attached to so the question is yep. how do you spin plates without getting attached to these ladies and what do you mean by spin plates well, I mean, like, like I, this is this is more when I say spin plates, I'm talking about more than just a sexual thing. Like, you know, I ha hang out with these people and I get to know them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, there's no, there's no commitment involved, of course, but these yeah. are people that are in my life and then they stay for X amount of time and then they might not be in my life if not, if one party doesn't enjoy it. Yeah. So how old are you? 20. 20. And what's wrong with, uh, first of all, you're doing exactly what you should be doing, which is kind of trying on some relationships and spinning plates and, and seeing how things go. But what's wrong with getting attached to people? Well, the issue is they leave. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I found out is that at this, at this age, um, getting too attached and especially like revealing, you know, that you you know, when you get to the women smell nice and oh, I want to be with you forever. If you, if you let that on, it, makes you significantly less attractive. I've found that letting that on from my personal experience has caused things to end pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what's wrong with getting attached to people? They leave you know, and then what? Well, I, I, I don't really, I don't really like how it feels to be left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody does. Um, but when, but when, I mean, you're, if you're, there's nothing wrong with being attached to people. I mean, I, I yeah. enjoy, I enjoy, the reason why I'm hanging out with people is because I hope that I enjoy hanging out with them. Right. Yeah. So if I may, um, if you're, well, you know, just for Sean's feelings, we're not going to use, <laughs> we're going to use, uh, My feelings, dating, what are you saying? dating women, not exclusively dating several women, not exclusively. And that's really what plates, uh, you know, plate spinning is. But, um, so if you're dating several women, not exclusively, why are you worried if one of them leaves, right? Like if you're spinning three plates and one drops, why do you care? 
That's a good point. The the one that dropped at that time was the only one. There had been like there well, you're had been place that you're then, you're dating one woman. Well, there had been three for the course of the summer, and then the summer ends. So then I decided to leave two, and then the one leaves. <laughs> okay. Got it. So um, because you. as the as the school school year begins to start, I'm going to be focusing on myself a lot more. I'm not going to have as much time for a lot of the a lot of the other stuff. Yeah. So generally speaking, I mean, that like you've just answered your own question, right? I mean, if you're going to date several women non-monogamously in your 20s, which is what we often talk about. So you get your head sorted out and you understand the sexual marketplace and you figure out what your worth is and all that sort of stuff. You will not care if a plate drops off because you'll have, you know, one or two or three other in the kitty sort of thing. Uh, it's not going to matter to you. It's not going to be significant. You're going to be a man coming from a place of abundance. Um, and it's really a life skill that you need to learn. Cause I think one of the things that guys that, that you, that you started to feel, you know, based on this experience is that, um, it's, it, it's very difficult to function when you catch feelings like strong feelings for a girl. And then she just, boom, she's gone. She up and leaves or mm -hmm. you know, up and she decides to monkey branch over another guy. And it's kind of a, um, a life skill that you have to get used to. Because it's going to happen many times in your life. I mean, um, nobody is with the same person that they lose their virginity to. It's, it's extremely rare that you know somebody marries their high school sweetheart, preserves their you know virginity until the age of twenty one. They got married at you know twenty two, had their three point one kids at a white picket fence in the station wagon, and they die holding hands, singing kumbaya at eighty six years old, side by side in the same beds. It never happens. It's very very ex exceptionally rare. Right. So you just have to get used to the fact that women are going to come and go in your life and they're not permanent fixtures. And that's like, yeah. So, Danny, the good news is you're not a sociopath. So, this is really good news. And that means <laughs> that um, you're going to get attached to people. And I think the thing to remember is that those feelings, those hurt feelings, that sense of abandonment, it's not going to kill you. You'll, you'll get yeah. through it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. But what's your alternative? Your alternative is what you're going to. So somehow have these people in your life, but you're not going to allow yourself to get connected to them. And then you're going to have these stilted relationships. Ah, come on. You make a good point. Yeah. So, so it's part of it. It's, it's part of it. It's part of it. it ain't going to kill you. All right. I appreciate it. So awesome. If there's anyone else on, then, you know, I don't want to monopolize your time, but if there's no one else on, then I have a few more questions. Yeah, you can fire away another question. I just uh, posted the link there to join in StreamYard. So if you guys want to click that, you'll be in the waiting queue. But go ahead, Danny, ask the next question. All right. So I realize that um, at this day, at this day and age, like when I'm 20, I find myself to be significantly more attracted to, I mean, more attractive women. But a lot of times, those women are higher drama. I realize that you know, long term, I want to try to vet for low drama women, but short term. I find myself to be, you know, obviously more attracted to the more attractive women. They turn out to be higher drama. There's a little bit of a of a conflict. Am I am I spinning place with people that make making relationships with people that I don't want to be with long term? Is that an issue, or am I just not looking in the right place? Well, I've said this before. A pleasant seven is far better than a bitchy ten, right? Yep. So that being said, natural selection says go for the 10 because she's hotter. She's got the nicer hips, her boobs are bigger. She's got, you know, more of the reproductive cues that, you know, men are going to look for just like, you know, women look for certain cues at men when they mate select. Um, so, I mean, if you're spinning plates again, you know, you're coming from a place of abundance, you've got two or three in the kitty. Um, and you discover that, you know, plate number two is a complete drama queen. She manufactures indignation, um, you know, she's on you every day about some nonsense. There's always, you know, she's got a, a problem for every solution sort of thing. And you want to say bye bye, you're not going to care because you've got a few others, you know, on the go. It's not going to matter to you. Um, you're going to, you're going to look past the beauty. Um, there's a list you should probably search for on, uh, Google and search for Chateau Hartiste, uh, 16 commandments of Poon. And one of the commandments is look past her beauty. Right. And, you know, breaks down in there. Why exactly? And look, man, you start doing this now when you're 20, then you won't have to learn how to do it when you're 30. Exactly. So practice now. So I can, so I can see it's like, I think that the, um, the getting attached was a little bit of, you know, I should take it as a, I'm not a sociopath, but I could see maybe it was a little bit of blue coat pill conditioning from high school, middle school coming back and saying, Oh, she left. Well, I, I have a longer theory than that on it. There's a video on my channel. Um, 
about breakups. So search entrepreneurs in cars uh, and then breakups, you know, the word after that, and you'll probably find the video. Um, I talked a little bit about Rolo's essay on war brides um, and I incorporated my own experiences and theories into that. But um, it's a little bit of a longer conversation, but check that out. I think it's worth looking into just so you understand a little bit more about the attachment theory that you feel. One called Understanding Heartbreak and Breakups. Bingo, that's it, yeah. All right, thank you. And uh, I got one other guy waiting on the stream, but you said he had other questions. You want to ask one more real quick before we let you go? Yeah, I have one more. So as um, as I'm going into my third year of uh, university, you know, this is when it starts to come down to, you know, I'm starting to get really busy. Now I actually have a part-time job and involved in a lot of clubs. So, you know, making making time for women becomes, you know, there's there's now you have to kind of budget that. There's not a whole lot of time in the schedule. So what what ways, what methods do you have as advice for the best way to integrate women or seeing women into my schedule? When it fits your schedule. What are you studying? Yeah. Physics. Physics. So you are in your third year at age 20, which means you started pretty at young 18. in college. Yeah. Right. So you're uh I'm going to guess that your cognitive development is a little bit ahead of your emotional development. And that's a blessing and a curse. A blessing is you get to go out and make money real soon. The curse is that uh, people are going to see you as more emotionally mature than maybe you are at the age of 20. So just slow things down, man. Focus on your career, focus on your foundation and fit women in when you can fit them in. Yeah. And the other thing to add, right. you know, add to that is if you're making them a priority in your schedule, there's, then you're going to have a higher possibility, you know, higher propensity to become strongly attached, right? If you're making them a priority, I published a video, I think last week or so, um, I might've hit it while I was on vacation, but it was, um, um, you know, if you treat her like a celebrity, she'll treat you like a fan. Yep, then she'll treat you like a fan. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you don't want to put yourself in a you know scenario where you're putting her first. It should be you first. It should be, you know, like the building blocks, like the foundation of what it is that you want to build for your life right now get that done, right? Focus on that. And then like Sean said, you know, as it fits your schedule. All right. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. I'll let you go and uh, we'll add the next person in for a question. Thanks, Danny. That was pretty seamless. What yeah, think? works good. Yeah. Okay. So um, we might, we might end up using this for, you know, instead of call-ins kind of click-ins and you guys can do it that way. Uh, I think Michael, you are up next. So I'm going to add you to the stream and uh, here you go. All right, fire away. You have a question for us, Mike? Nope, we're gonna let you go then. Guys, make sure you have your question ready. Uh, Ilya, I think you are next. So add to stream, go, fire away. You have a question for us. Um, yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're loud and clear. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, um, I have a question for you. I'm a, I come from Eastern Europe and growing up in Western world, I, I grew up in, in, in London, in fact. Um, and I can see the difference in, um, in women back home and here, here, there are two different things. And I would like to get an advice from you guys, like, I just graduated from high school and uh, I watched your vid video where you talked about um, dating advice for 20 year olds. And uh, I just would like to get more thoughts from you. Can, you. can you narrow down your question to one specific statement that you need help with? Yeah, um, what should I fo focus in like that age? I just turned 18 and uh, I can feel this sexual desire within me. Good. And uh, it you're just a, you're, hard, a, you know. you're a healthy young man. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, I'm I'm six foot nine by the way. Six foot nine. Yeah, I'm 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 a really athletic guy. Where do you live? I live in London right now, but I'm from Grand Bend. Sorry, you're from where? From London. But you're originally from where? From Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay. Yep. Well you have the advantage of height, something that most men have a disadvantage in. Um, so you have the opportunity for a lot of uh, very tall, beautiful women that um, would be able to look up to you. So good, good for you right there. Um, what should you be doing with your time? Again, you know, it's pretty much the same thing um, that 
or essentially the same advice we gave to Danny. Uh, make yourself your own mental point of origin. You know, you're focusing on building your your life. You're going through your schooling. Um, get your red pill awareness clear. You know, like understand female nature, understand the dynamics on the sexual marketplace. You, of course, my recommendation anyway. I want to hear Sean, you know, your thoughts on this, but don't get into a long term relationship with anybody until you're um, well into your late 20s, like even 30. I mean, you, you've got a long way to go before you should even consider um, marriage or anything to do with LTRs. It should be all about what is it that you're building for yourself and make sure that that is the focus of what's going on for you. Sean, you want to add to that? Yeah. What is your plan, man? What, what's going on in your life? Um, yeah. So I would like to get to trades because I know that's where the most jobs are. Um, and uh, I just feel there's lots of potential in, in trades. Um, uh, yeah, and that, that's what I'm after. The trades, what do you want to do? Like welding, plumbing, what um, are you thinking? Yeah, I was thinking about like mechanic cars. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like work, working on cars. That's my passion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so I, you know, if, I, if I were 18 years old and I was in your shoes and I was in a new country, that's what I'd be focused on. And women would be way down on the list for me right now. Yeah, I understand. However, uh, <laughs> but also cannot... I was 18 once and women were top of the list when they shouldn't have been. Right. Um, that's my point. You cannot hide the sexual desire. Right. No, it's within you. Nobody's yeah. telling you to hide it. Nobody's telling you to, you know, to suppress it. Women are in their party years, you know, pretty much up until the age of like, you know, 26, 27, 28, like in and around then. So they're going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be spinning plates. They're not going to be serious about dating. They're going to be partying up. They'll be in Ibiza in the summertime. Um, the cute, you know, Italian guy that shows up at Pasha at three o'clock in the morning, she'll go home with him 20 minutes after she meets him. That's, that's the reality of your early twenties, right? So just, just kind of approach it from that angle. Um, when it comes to women, um, read Sean's Tactical Guide to Women. Uh, read at least the first two books in Rolla Tomasi's uh, Rational Male series. Um, you know, go deep into that. There's lots of stuff on my channel that's all free, you know, um, that will help you lay the groundwork. But uh, just focus on those things. Like, that's really what it boils down to. I mean, you're a tall, handsome man. You got a lot of shit going for you. Now, now you just don't want to fuck it up. You don't want to choose the wrong woman. You don't want to make some bad choices and bring her into your life to ruin any of those things um, because it can be very, very costly, right? So right now you should be working on your game, you know, continue to go to the gym, make sure you're building a strong masculine, you know, physique. You've got the advantage of height all day long, which a lot of guys would love. There's lots of tall, beautiful women in London. Have fun. All right. Thanks for got, I got a question for you real quick before you go, Ilya. Uh, um, you said you noticed some differences between women in Ukraine and women in the U.S. What do you notice? Yeah. Um, not just women in Ukraine, just w women from Central and Eastern U Europe in general. I feel like they're more feminine and they're a little bit more traditional. However, it's just my opinion because I grew up there up until 12. And I've spent uh, uh, six years here in Canada, and it's just my opinion. I can see the difference. More feminine, how? Um, I believe they they fit um, more traditional role of women. Like she takes care of home, um, of like cleaning, um, dishwashing. Uh, cooking all okay I might be losing them yeah it sounds like you dropped off I got the gist of it though okay I'm so. I'm good now all right um okay. Ilya gonna let you go from the stream just gonna put you back in the waiting area just to clear up the audio but um yeah apparently when there's a few things going on I had some notifications come through on another app I just closed but hopefully that clears it up but yeah, thoughts on that? I mean, you know, he's just talking about women in Eastern Europe being more feminine. I, I think it's common knowledge. I mean, like the like the thing that most guys get wrong, though, is they'll end up, well, let me go get this magical unicorn from the Ukraine and bring her into the United States or Canada or, or England. And then they find that, um, <laughs> I think it's buzzing now. And then they find that um, what ends up happening in about a year or two is they end up kind of defaulting to, you know, the feminine standards that are here that they found unattractive in the women here though. Right. 
Yeah. Well, I imagine if you were a woman coming here and you're coming into this culture and you have this one set of values that comes from your culture, and then you come to America and all the women have a different set of values, you're working next to them and you're talking to them all day. It will be hard to be the one that goes against the grain and maintains your old set of values. Yeah. There's a comment here from Conk. I'm just going to show it on the screen. He says, uh, Ukraine girls have a stereotype of gold digging for sale brides. And he's not wrong. I've had a few guys that I've coached um, that were kind of in that space. But uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, he's out of that area. I'm going to throw on, you know what? I'm going to give priority to guys that have a uh, camera feed because I just think that the flow goes better. Um, so I'm going to add you to the stream, Juan. Go ahead. You got, uh, you got yourself muted. Just check the mute button on your broadcast. Bottom right of the screen, little microphone thing. All right. Do me a favor, just in the private chat, just let me know when you got that figured out. Um, Stan, I hope you got your audio working. Let's throw you in. Go ahead. How, how are we doing? You're awesome. Fire away. Let's do it. All right. So I got a little bit of a two-parter. It's actually kind of a good segue from uh, the guy in the Ukraine. Yeah. So I just made a trip out to uh, Eastern Europe myself. Okay. Um, I, live in, I live in Georgia. And uh, what I noticed when I was out there flirting with women in uh, Hungary and Romania and whatnot, sleeping with a couple, there was like this part of me that uh, was kind of like my old beta ways um, was feeling like a hopeless romantic while I was out there. And it kind of like hit me and fell in love with a couple girls that I met out there. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of wondering if that means that a part of me kind of hasn't necessarily killed off all the beta inside of me How old are you? or if it's because I knew 27, 27 or if it's because I knew that I would never see these women again. And I'm still keeping in touch with, uh, the two that I, uh, met and slept with out there. But when I came back here to the States, I kind of started obviously reengaging with, um, the, the females or the plates that I have going on out here. And, um, just, you know, continuously was comparing the two of them to each other. So I wasn't really sure, but it was an incredible experience because that guy's right that the women out there in, in uh, Eastern and Central Europe are they're absolute smokes for the most part and um, really do not subscribe to, to Western feminism. Yeah, you got um, you got an inter interesting dynamic there because a lot of guys will go in, um, they'll kind of revert to the softer, you know, plugged in beta that they used to be. Um, and I think it's pretty natural just because you think, oh, look, I found a unicorn and she's so feminine and pretty and she wears dresses all the time and has her makeup done and she'll actually like make me a sandwich when I ask her sort of thing. Um, and then you realize, holy crap, all of a sudden I've turned myself into a beta and I've become a little more unattractive than what I was a few weeks ago. Like, is that what you're talking about? It, pretty much, pretty much. But I just noticed like even in the conversations now that I've been yeah. back in the States for about a week and a half. Like, yeah, well, I mean, you always got to be on your toes, you know, around here, right? <laughs> that's exactly right. It's exhausting, doesn't it? It really is. So what does beta mean in your case? Well, kind of like the hopeless romantic where where I am, uh, I'm not playing the games that I have to play when I'm engaging with a woman here because uh, my strategy is that I want to basically, I have another seven, eight years until I'm looking for a long-term relationship and I'm building my business and my music career and I know that a woman would just be a distraction. So kind of as a good segue into the part two is that um, since I've been on this little red pill journey, um, I've had several women in my life and there's one that's been around for the past two or three months the challenge is and she's awesome and might even have like love for her problem is, is that she's 31 and, and everything is great really really the best physical connection i've ever had we get along great i don't have to pull any punches the relationship is totally there but, but what have i explained to her is just that again i'm not looking for any kind of an ltr for the next seven eight years because I'm building something and you're 31 and it's just unfortunate timing. Mm -hmm. But I guess my question to you guys is, is that she obviously isn't the one, there's no one itis and whatnot, but um, the, the, the connection is really leaps and bounds above the dozens of other women that I've experienced. And so, you know, I make comments like it's too bad that we're never going to be together because, you know, I really like you. And she's makes comments like, just go with the flow. And obviously she wants to wrap me in and kind of get me for the long haul, but I just don't really know what to do because she's a human being and the connections there. And she's definitely a high quality woman, but it's 31 so, years of age. Yeah. Like, you're talking about the myth of the high quality woman now, but I mean, at the same time, like your question is, well, what do I do? And just keep doing you. I mean, you've already 
like you've already expressed your intent. You've already let her know, you know, what your opinion and view on anything, you know, mildly serious with her would look like. It doesn't, it doesn't exist for a period of time on your schedule, but, um, you know, you're 28. Sorry? Seven, 27. 20, yeah, 27. She's 31, right? I mean, you're talking like almost five years. I mean, by, by the time you're 35, I mean, she's going to be exactly 40. And 35 exactly. is when you come into your peak. That's probably when you're going to start wanting to go, all right, well, if I want kids, this, you know, this is the time to vet for the, um, you know, for the woman now. Um, but you're going to be looking at 28 year olds then, you know, when you're 35, right? So, that's, and I can't get that out of my head. Yeah. But I would like Sean's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a reality. But Sean, go. I'll, I want to hear you. Yeah. I don't have much to add to that. I mean, it sounds like you're being honest with her. And if you're being honest with her, I, I don't know what you have to regret about whatever unfolds other than it sounds like you do care about her. And maybe part of the equation is you get out of her way if she's looking to have kids and so forth now. Um, yeah. I, but beyond that, um, you know, Honest non-monogamy is the way to go if you're going to be non-monogamous. Understood. If she goes, I guess I'll just, I, I'll just close it off with you guys, the work that you guys have done. If my life over the past eight months after following both your content has gone leaps and bounds above what it, it was before. So, so hang, hang on. Can, let me ask you a couple of questions of a May. We got a minute on this one, Rich? Oh, absolutely. Let's do it, yeah. Okay. So it started off with this story. I don't know if you heard it about the guy who left his fiance at the altar when his family started pointing out some pretty serious red flags to him. And it sounded like he felt really guilty about doing that. And I'm wondering, I, I was kind of hoping that would be a, a little undercurrent in this show is that talking about guys who are feeling guilty about walking away when they know they needed to walk away. So let me ask you, do you know that you need to walk away? So, and it's funny that you say that because this is kind of like a little side thing is that I actually do have a lot of guilt when I am sleeping with women, knowing that I am potentially doing them um, emotional long-term harm mm -hmm. because they're not going to lock me down as a mate. And then therefore I could be putting it into their head. Why can't I hold down a good guy, even though I'm being upfront with them, that I'm not looking for anything. I find that women, they still don't want to listen to your words. They want to they look for your, your signals. So to answer your question, I do feel guilty, but I always am stressing, don't pause your life for me. Keep looking for other people while we're doing what we're doing and having a good time because we're both human and we both want a connection while we're living our lives. But um, she is continually uh, saying things like the most important thing to me, which I've expressed from the very beginning, is com uh, not commitment, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? That, uh, that basically you're committed to me while we're having sex and I'm the only person you're having sex with. Well, she's talking about sexual exclusivity. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and the comment that and say, say no. Yeah, and the comment that was made to me was that, um, you know, she said that uh, I feel like what I'm asking you is really simple. Don't just stick your dick in another girl. And what I said is, is that it sounds simple on paper, but the reality is, is that you're asking me to kill off a completely another avenue of my life where I can't explore other options out there. And if I made the same commitment to all the other women before you, I never would have met you in the first place and we wouldn't be here. Have you read um, Caleb Jones, um, Alpha Male 2.0? I have not. Check it out. So, so let me go back to the question. Um, what, in your ethic, what is the right thing to do with this lady? I mean, the right thing to do would probably be for me to, the problem is, is that she's one of my really good friends and roommates. So we're going to keep seeing each other no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then her comment is maybe she, she basically said that we need to stop doing this because one of us is going to get hurt. And what I said is, is that you can stop whenever you want because I'm not the one who's going to get hurt. And that's the reality of the situation. The problem is I could say that I would, could never, would never see this person again, but she's a, a good friend's roommate. So I'm going to see her. And because since the moment of meeting her, I always was in, this is a pretty girl, I'm gonna flirt with her and I'd like to sleep with her. There is, There never was a friend zone moment, even though that we were hanging out by proximity for about two months before sleeping together. Yeah, I guess what I'm getting at, and it sounds like the answer is no, is, is there something that you should be doing that you're not doing out of some sense of guilt or obligation or duty? And what I'm hearing is that you've been straight with her and she's not listening. So I guess that's kind of on her. But um, I'm not hearing that you think you should break it off with her, but it's a sense of guilt that's keeping you in. It's it's not. It's definitely not that. But the what what I'm noticing as I'm going through this 
single life red pill journey is that women don't listen to your words. They just want to use words like just go with the flow because they think that they'll, you know, be the one to, to, to tame you and lock you down. And then what you're doing to them might be kind of hurting them in the long run because you know that you're never going to be in a long-term relationship and they want one and might kind of fuck with their psyche a little bit. So that's the guilt that I feel. You're caring far too much. <laughs> I agree. Um, which I think is probably pretty normal. I mean, Sean's probably looking at me going, really? Dude, you just said that? But um, yeah. What like, do you mean he's caring too much? What, what is he caring yeah, too much about? Like he's like giving too many fucks. I mean, like like when you, when you come to understand, um, you know, the reality of the world, uh, you know, life, human nature, you know, intersexual dynamics more specifically, um, you're going to like stuff like this is going to happen, right? You know, where you're going to be like, well, am I doing the right thing? Am I breaking the, like at the end of the day, dude, are you leaving them better than when you met them? Right? Like that's, that's really what it should boil down to. Right? So if you're honest about what it is you're doing, how you're dating, you're, it's not just her. Um, she's too old for you. You're not looking to settle down for another, whatever, six, or seven years. You've already communicated that you're doing your thing. And if she wants to keep seeing you, cool. If she decides to cut ties, um, and you know, ghost you, that's cool too. Right. It doesn't matter because you've made yourself your own mental point of origin. You're going forward that way. But I feel like you're like, you give too many fucks about, am I going to hurt her feelings? Right? Like, am I going to, am I going to break her? Am I going to whatever? Like who cares? Like women don't care. Women don't care about a man's struggle. They hang out at the finish line and they bang the winners, right? Like I've said that before. So why do you care? And that's actually Can, a really good comment. Yeah. Just, just real quick about uh, did you leave them better than you found them? I actually used that verbatim on the Romanian girl mm. as I was getting on the plane of, hey, I just want to make sure that I'm leaving you better than I found you. And I absolutely think that I did. So good. That's uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with you. Up to a point there, Rich, where I, I agree that the, the danger with caring too much about am I hurting her feelings? Am I, you know, all this sort of being wrapped up around how she's doing, which I think you should be wrapped up around how somebody's doing if you're sleeping with them. But at the same time, the dark side of that is that that's what leads guys to the altar when they shouldn't be there. Yes, and, that's that's an important statement that we have not made yet. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm not in danger of that because I consume way too much of your guys' content. So, um, well, don't appreciate the, appreciate the insight. Don't spend too much time consuming it, man. Get out there and live life too, right? Yeah. That too. Trust me. All right. All right. I'm Who's, wait, one, one last question. Who's oh. in charge of the birth control there? Oh, okay. Good one. Good one. At, Who's in control uh, of the birth? Uh, well, I mean, I'm pulling out, so don't worry about it. <laughs> are, you, are you a really good puller outer? Is that what the plan is? I'd like to think so. Good. I, okay. I've been good so far. Good. Well, hey, hang, hang on, what? hang on. Is she on the pill or what? What's what's really going she, on? She's not, and uh, and that is, uh, you know, what I'm sounding really stupid as I'm saying this out loud, but she is. She's not. So you sound you sound a little reckless at this moment. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty reckless. So let me give you a little bit of advice on this one. Um, you know, as an expert puller outer. <laughs> um, you, there's, there's apps that you can get on pretty much any smartphone, you know, device now, um, that will let you track your girl's cycle. Um, you just basically hit a button when she starts her period and then it tells you when she's ovulating. If you're, if you're a really good puller out or good for you, but you probably want to wear a condom when the little flowers are up just around that time, just to be extra clean and sure. You oh, probably want to wear a condom all the time. Yeah, yeah I would. I'm, yeah, but I mean, right. like, what, so what's with the it, recklessness? You're you're so careful about her. Feet. Like, what is you're it? So careful about where you're going. What's with the recklessness around potentially knocking her up? Because it feels good, and girl and girls smell nice. Because it feels. <laughs> Am good I wrong? Smell nice. And, and I've, been, <laughs> I've been on a hot streak, and uh, I've been fine for the past year, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know. So you're I gonna keep it. rolling those dice. Oh God! Right <laughs> here. here, I'm gonna put a comment from MLB. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Randy, Stan, thanks for uh, hopping on here. Appreciate man. it, guys. Appreciate sharing the story. Let's be careful out there. All right. Um, this is actually working out pretty good. I mean, there's some, there's, a, okay, so guys, there's a bunch of you that are on the stream right now that have already contributed, like Ilya, for example. Stan, if you can leave, I can't remove you for some reason. I can only add you to the stream, but just leave so it makes room for new, new people to join. I, I keep getting this alert popping up saying, your studio's full and 10 people are trying to enter. 
Um, okay. Should we carry on with the Q&A or do you want to pause? For yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little hung up on this last dude not controlling the birth control. This is, well, that yeah. makes me nervous. I was fine up until he said controlling that. Controlling the birth control by being a really good puller outer. Until yeah. it work though, right? Until it doesn't work. We all took biology, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> we know how biology works. But I mean, it, it, like they've even built out apps where, where it'll basically track the period but also tell you when it's safe to go inside her or not i don't recommend using it you know using that strategy um but if you're a younger guy and you're raw dog in it sort of thing i would definitely make sure you're wearing a condom around the time that the flowers on the app because you know you're a young dude you're both pretty fer fertile so be careful all but right so i will i will qualify this by saying that i am more paranoid than the average bear but i can picture myself eight years down the road with a seven-year-old child going, well, I used an app and the app said, of, you know, well, whatever. don't, don't listen to an app. <laughs> it says, just go inside anytime you want. Um, yeah. there's a difference there. One is, you know, we're talking about. Two right. Right. Um, well, this is why I don't gamble. I get too nervous about this stuff. We got a, we got a bunch of people in the waiting area laughing their right. ass off right now. Uh, let's try Juan, see if he's got his mic working. Okay. Well, on you're up, buddy. No, your mic's still not up, dude. You're just, Maybe Juan's just really quiet. Nope. Now you got the line through your mic. So now it says you're muted, muted for sure. You, you, now you're unmuted. Yeah, you got a problem with your phone, dude. Got, got to let you go. Sorry. All right, James, going to throw you in. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Rich and Sean? You guys have a good night. James, yeah. you using rubbers? What are you doing? You taking care of yourself? Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, I'm glad you guys picked me because I have the greatest story for you guys that pertains to this topic. So, uh, uh, I, uh, so I just want to set up some context here so that you guys can understand where I'm coming from. Um, so I, uh, I had my last relationship was back, uh, freshman year of college. I've been, I, I had just graduated college this last year. And, uh, so I, uh, you know, I, I had been kind of focused, like I haven't touched the red pill stuff, like, you know, until like last month anyways. Um, so, uh, I was going into my fourth year of college and uh, I basically, you know, I went to a very, like I went to a engineering school. So it was a lot of on, you know, on course. Like I, I surrounded myself with the best brain power because I knew where I wanted to go after school. So I, I wanted to um, get on the same bra brain wavelength as everyone else, basically. Anyways, so I went into my fourth year and I was like, you know, I was like, I've, I've done school for four years now. So what, you know, let me see, you know, let me just, go i didn't go crazy but i was like you know what let me just uh you know let me just experiment with this i mean i basically i wouldn't say i went monk mode but i went you know i went four years of um three years mostly of just schoolwork. anyway so i uh so i was on twitter you know and there was this girl that kept like favoriting my tweets and um she was a mutual friend from back home um and so you know i i i just kind of um i slid into the dms i guess and um so i slid into the dms we had some mutual friends and we kind of hit it off like you could tell like our personalities like mesh really well like we mesh really well and you know that was i was like damn this is pretty cool so i added her on snapchat or whatever and um and this was around election time uh for midterms in the u.s so uh i remember we talked all october i mean we texted snapchatted uh, FaceTime, talked on the phone. I mean, she basically threw her problems onto me. Um, and, uh, there were some signs that I had picked up. So, uh, keep in mind that, I mean, I hadn't touched the red pill stuff. So I was very emotionally stable. I knew, you know, I knew what I wanted. And, uh, there were some signs that I had picked up on in that first month where she was drinking, you know, there were some nights where, uh, at, well, at the time I was going to bed at nine 30 on the dot, waking up at six o'clock. Like I was, you know, doing my stuff. There were some nights where I wouldn't even know if she was sober or not, where she was, she played on the soccer team at her university. And there were some times where, you know, uh, I would text her and I didn't even know if she was sober and, um, she was an accounting major. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing against accounting majors, but she didn't really seem like she had her priorities straight, but you know, I kind of saw that and I kept it in the back of my mind. Um, so anyways, um, about closer to election time, I went back home 
And uh, I had, well, I had asked her, cause I, I went to school maybe an hour and a half away. And I had asked her, I said, hey, like, do you think it's worth me like going back home to vote? Cause I was like, it's an hour and a half. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But she's like, hey, if you go back home, then, um, then let's get dinner. I was like, okay, let's get dinner. So we went and got dinner. Um, that was great. You know, we went and got Japanese and we went and got ice cream. I mean, it was perfect. Like it was great. Everything was good, but I kept those things in the back of my mind cause I knew what I wanted there. So anyways, um, so it was like great. And then, uh, in the, she, James, James I'm going to yep. stop you for a second. Cause I want to get to the too long. Didn't read version. Okay. Okay. So oh, I, I'll, I'll cut to it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to set that up anyways. So she sits me or, or she, uh, sets up, she goes, Hey, how about you come to my weekend or to my apartment next weekend? Um, keep in mind, this is a two and a half hour drive for me. And I was like, well, I was like, okay, like, let's do it. Anyways. So long story short, the first night I get there on a Friday night, I end up, it, it, I end up taking four hours to drive over there, end up taking four hours, get over there. Um, I thought we were just going to chill. I got there at nine 30. We went out to the club. She started talking to another dude and I was like, yo, like I, I kept it in the back of my mind. I'm not very jealous, but I kept it in the back of my mind. Anyways. Um, you know, Friday night goes along. We go back to her place. Um, I'm thinking, you know, we're just going to go to bed, go to dinner. Uh, then she's like, oh, let's go play volleyball. Anyways, the dude that she had gotten the number from from the bar uh, ended up being there. So I was like, okay, that's a little sketchy. Uh, but I didn't, you know, by 1230, I'm already dead. I want to go to bed. Um, uh, so then, like, they're flirting or whatever. I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm not jealous. I'm still just chilling, like, just by myself. Then I'm like, okay, let's go to the pool. And so we go to the pool. It's like 4 a.m. at this point. So we go back to her right. place. After too, long, that. too long, didn't read. Summarize it. Okay, so long story short, um, one of her teammates had a birthday party. We went to the birthday party. She blew me off the whole weekend. I mean, she basically blew me off the whole weekend and um, went to her party, basically stranded me there. And uh, I got up Sunday morning and I left. You went wrong? Yep. I, as soon as I saw that she basically ditched me uh, after two and a half hours, didn't check up on me, didn't didn't even. Well, there uh, was attraction there, right? Like there was obviously attraction there because yep. you guys were chatting. For sure. And I mean, when I went back to her place, we, all that, we made out. Listen, listen, hold up. Really? You're clicking in link. You got you to gotta give me a second. Of that answer. Gotcha. You hit her up with the, you know, I'm thinking it's midterms. You, you know, what do you think? Should I go back and vote? Right. You're not coming from a place of strength and authority and masculinity, right? It's like, you know, you're coming at her from a soft perspective. And if that was carrying through on the entire dynamic, the entire time that you were courting her, at some point she was like, F this guy. James isn't, you know, man enough for me. I'm going to chat up these guys in the nightclub in the bar. And that's how you ended up in the spot that you're at right there. And, then. and I don't know if that's the point, you know, like the pivot point where you went wrong, but I could, but I could tell right away, like as soon as you asked her permission to go back and vote, she she started to dry up. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that it was the if I was asking her to vote, it was more of like, should I go back home? It, like, is it worth it? Like, are we going to do our masters of complicating their lives and justifying why they do it? Well, uh, that's, blah, 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 blah. that's exactly what you just did there. OK, well, I mean, I don't like that wasn't really the point of it, though. So anyways, like I went there and I went to her apartment. I left the next day. I mean, because I, I kind of knew what I wanted and she had caught and tossed me to the wolves. And it was like I just felt like there was no respect there for me. So I got up the next day Sunday morning. respect for you because of the beta behavior that you're exhibiting. That's why it happened. How old are you? Um, 22. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a computer scientist. Okay. Never drive more than 30 minutes to meet a check. Yeah. Yeah. If there's two so, hours distance, make her come to you. Let me That's ask you a question. Mouth. When, um, when Rich says beta behavior, you know what he's talking about here? Um, beta is a stakeholder. It's, it, it's like, you know, like I want to, I want to hear, I want to hear his version of it. Okay, go. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he gets it. My, my version is just coming from a place of weakness where I'm, a, I'm asking her instead of me taking the lead and me uh, s like setting the precedent. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I think you got it. Did you get it, Rich? Yeah, so you have the idea. So yeah. like in, in every exchange, like in every dynamic that you have with this girl, there's the concept of frame, right? And one party always enters the other party's frame, right? So you either enter her frame or she enters yours. And, you know, the fact that, you know, you're driving whatever it was, two hours or four hours or whatever the hell it was, you know, to go see her and then spend the weekend with her. And then she's going to a nightclub and all that, like, like you're operating in her frame, right? 
You're doing all these things to placate her. You're putting her up on a pedestal. Again, there was a video that I put out last week. You know, you treat her like a celebrity. She's going to treat you like a fan. That's exactly what she did. You treated her like a celebrity. You drove all that time to put her up on a pedestal, to idolize who she is. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're like, well, she's not going to give me any more attention. I mean, what the hell happened, right? So she's John at Modern Life Dating raised an interesting point. Would she have driven to see you, James? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't think she would. Um, but... I guess this is kind of how I justified it was, you know, she's a female and her coming to my place. Um, I kind of felt like, you know, that kind of makes sense. It's, it's kind of like a foreign environment for her. Whereas like if I enter into a foreign environment, I can kind of stand my own. But if it's a female coming to a completely foreign place, I kind of felt like, okay, that kind of makes sense because um, you know, females like to me, I think that they would rather be, in a comfortable situation, especially with a guy coming over for the weekend. So that's kind of how I justified it in my head. Yeah, you're just rationalizing BS in your head again, right? Men are masters of complicating their lives and then justifying why they do it. Yeah, your answer to my question was no, she wouldn't come and see me. And then you came up with this nice chivalrous explanation and that that kind of spares your feelings and makes her we'll look good. And, story, Sean. Yeah. We'll call it what it is, just call it a bullshit story. Yeah, it's a bullshit story. Yeah, it's a bullshit story, right? Like you're just making up some story. And it's like, okay, let me let me click in and ask Sean and Rich what they think of this dumb shit that I did. And you know, why did you do it? And how do I not do it next time? And I get it, dude, right? I mean, like you, you know, like you dug her vibe, you know, you slid in the DMs and you thought something good was gonna happen, but you're 22 years old. How many other girls are you dating right now? Um, I'm basically, I just started a job, so I basically don't have anything on the radar. Like I'm just doing my own stuff. Um, I got, you know, I got, I got finances to take care of. How long ago did this happen? Cause you're talking about this happening around the midterms. Like I'm Canadian, so I'm kind of new here. Uh, this was last October. Last October. So yep. this is almost a year ago. You're still marinating over this what? event. Well, I wouldn't say I'm marinating over it. I, I, I call, no, 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 I called in. Hold on a second. Let's call a spade a spade, dude. I put a link in the chat for you guys to join and ask questions. This happened in October, okay? For an alcoholic to realize he has a drinking problem, he has to first acknowledge that he's an alcoholic. You are still marinating over this BS from last October. Can you please accept that? Um, I, I, well, I want to give you the reason why I called into the show. No, I don't, I don't, I don't care about the reason behind. Just accept first that you're marinating over this event last October. I, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that, Rich. Because here's the thing, I called in because I felt like it applied to the topic of the show and that, you know, your viewers kind of, I mean, that it's kind of something that I felt like I dodged that bullet because I had kind of known as I was going into it what I wanted. I was emotionally stable and I had seen some red flags, but then as soon as she stopped showing me the respect, I got out of Dodge and I got she back. Lost, she lost respect for you the minute that you got in your car and started driving out over there to see her. Well, and then that's where I wanted to link it back into your theme was once I noticed that I pulled out instead of sitting there and texting her, oh, you know, can you come over and being hung up on it and staying there the whole weekend? She wanted me to stay there Monday through Monday. And then I left Sunday morning and without even talking to her, without even telling her. And um, so that's kind of, you know, with the theme of you should have left, you should have left the minute that she disrespected you in the nightclub. You should have got your shit and bounced. So the thing about that was, though, because I, I had to TLDR it, was I didn't have a way back to her apartment to get the keys because her roommate was with me, and Uber. I honestly Uber. didn't have Uber, 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 taxi, Uber. It doesn't matter, dude. Like, like, stop, stop justifying weak behavior. That, like, if I can offer you one piece of advice that I want you to walk away from, and you may hate me after, you know, uh, that guy abused me. He's kind of mean, that rich guy. I don't. Uh -huh. like I want to talk to Sean instead. <laughs> here's, here's the reality dude i i am coming from a place of love and i am telling you flat out that you are acting like a beta bitch and you need to lift up your skirt and grab your nuts and become a man and 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 lose the weakling behavior because if you keep doing this you're going to run into the same kind of result with the next girl and the next girl and the next girl right so understand that that's what's holding you back from being successful from becoming the better version of yourself you you're a good looking dude you're well spoken you know you're clean cut all that sort of stuff it's just you have to understand the dynamics of attraction and there's arousal cues and there's attraction cues right mm -hmm. and you want her to get the gina tingles and she's not going to get the gina tingles if you're going to drive four hours to go see her right yeah the gina tingles driving over you because it's that meatball between her ears that really starts like caffeinating the hamster when she's driving over and thinking about all the great stuff that's going to happen, right? Yep.
So just so, so just think about the frame of every interaction that you're exposing yourself with all these you know conversations with these women. So James, let me give you a. a a phrase here to practice with yourself. The phrase is what's the bottom line? Cause I think rich is picking up on something that I'm picking up on rich. Don't let me put words in your mouth, but um, what I'm hearing is that if you're not careful, I think you have this tendency to put a whole lot of words around this story and it prevents you from seeing what's really going on. So if you can get yourself to ask, what's the bottom line here, cut through all the words in the stories, um, you might see more clearly earlier what's going on. And I hear what you're saying. Like you're telling the story about how you did break away. Rich, I think, is picking up on the fact that it wasn't nearly quick enough. Rich wants it to happen a lot sooner. And I'm wondering if it's this this tendency to explain and tell stories, which probably serves you well in some areas, but maybe not in this area. Yeah, it's just, it's just having some dignity, right? And and that's where I felt like she kind of crossed the line with that dignity. Whereas if I'm driving, like you said, two and a half hours away, I'm yeah. driving that far and I'm getting tossed to the wolves in a completely foreign women, environment. Women don't care. They hang out of the yep. front line and they bang the winners. They don't care about what, what choices you've made along the way. They don't care about your struggle. They don't care about the rationalizations that you make in your head. They can't see past their own nose. Female solipsism is that strong. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, so I, I completely agree, Rich. And uh, um, I, you know, I, <laughs> Uh, I hope I didn't come off as like argumentative there, but um, you know, I just kind of want to handle anybody. Trust me. You're not going to put me in my, place. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, but it is your show. I want to show you respect. So it, it's I appreciate not, that man, but yeah. I hope you're going to put on like, you know, you know, the dad hammer and, and, and yeah, yeah. Down on the table totally, and like, I totally appreciate it. Up, son. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to let you go. Uh, just quick. Right, thank you to uh, Davy for the super <laughs> chat. Uh, two bucks. He says uh, the shit hurts, but it's truth. Good work, Rich. Thank you, man. appreciate that. Um, guys, you know, continue to, you know, support the show with super chats. They're much appreciated. Just hit it there and I'll throw it up on the screen and you can, uh, have it up there for yourself. Um, we got a bunch of people waiting on, I don't know, man. Uh, like I just wish guys would see the reality of their behavior, but it just takes a certain amount of trauma for them to feel it. And it, you know, like it is what it is, man. Thanks for the super chat bio Zide TV. Appreciate that. Says I'm cringing hard, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what what, it? What's to cringe about? I mean, the guy, you're just laying out what you saw to the guy, which was there was a lot of stories and a lot of explaining. And a lot. It was blinding yeah. him to the truth. A lot of, you know, we love to make stories. We love to make stories. Yeah. All right. So let's go back here and see who we got in queue. We got Casey. Casey, turn in. Hello. Did you just drop your dinner? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I lost attention. Sorry. <laughs> All right, you got a question for us. Fire away. Yeah, so I'm going to cut the cam because I know my connection is slow. So I'm going to stop the cam, or do you want me to keep it? Um, That's fine. Kill the cam if you want. Okay. So, again, good cases. So, here's my little background. I'm an engineer student. I'm 20. I never dated anybody. I'm anticipating that I'm going to be making a decent amount of money because I got some offers from some big firms, Microsoft. Whirlpool. But I feel like I'm going to run into a wall and crash really straight if I don't change my mindset, my mindset about life. What do you think is holding you back with your mindset right now? Well, I have always believed that the right path in life was go to school, get a perfect GPA, get a job, get married, two and a half kids and a dog, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That for me was the right path to life. Now, you know, the more I observe people, the more I see life, I'm like, eh, things barely ever go that way. So I'm just trying to like concentrate myself and say, okay, now that this word is not what I wish it was, how do I align myself so that I get the least trouble out of this life? Okay, so you're 20, you haven't had a girlfriend. I'm, I'm assuming that you're a virgin? Yes. Okay. Um, have you read Sean's Tactical Guide to Women? No. Read it. Have I you read it? Too much time. Uh, I'm your typical nerd who spent too much time in science book than anything else. Okay, but I mean, like you like girls, obviously, and girls smell nice, so you want to get involved with one at some point. So I think it's pretty important that if you're going to make a good choice when it comes to a girl, that you at least understand what to vet for and you know what what uh, traits to look out for that could be problematic. So Sean's Tactical Guide to Women is a great resource. Um, there's a link in the description of all my videos. That's the book right there. You can grab it off Amazon. It's an audio, audio book as well. Have you read the Rational Mail series? No. I, I'm 
a lot of books right now, but I need to start more reading more of those web. I know they are in your YouTube description, so I already know the titles I need to read. Yeah, so this is kind of like one on one stuff. This is like you know asking me a basic question like uh, how do I walk? Right? It's you know it's something that we can talk about off the air. It's probably not the okay. Time. Okay, but what I would so like to do, what I would sorry, like to Casey, before you run into any problems, is is understand that right now this engineering degree that you're working for obviously is your priority, and you don't want to screw up things by picking the wrong chick. So you need to understand women. You need to understand the dynamics between men and women. And those those three books alone, Rational Male One and Two, minimum. Third book's good too. And Sean's Tactical Guide. And there's lots of good videos on my channel. Watch all that stuff. You know, back to back. Um, uh, another good use of your time would, you know, would be to book me for a coaching call. So one of the things that I do with guys is I also, uh, where's the link over here? There we go. Is I help guys vet, you know, for scenarios like this. So you can book me at clarity.fm forward slash Richard Cooper. It's going to cost you money, but I'll, but I'll help you get through the entire process. So you understand exactly what you're up against. Um, but read those books first, Casey, because there's a lot of basic stuff in there that you need to fundamentally understand before we could be of much use for you on a show like this. So start there for me, okay? okay. Let me throw so, one more thing at you there. Um, that uh, He's still on, so he can hear you, but I just Okay, cool. So when you find out that life is dangerous in any area, the, there's this real danger that you can get sucked into the dark side. Like a lot of people have this imaginary image that they can go through life and they're never going to get a car accident. They're never going to get cancer and nothing bad's ever going to happen to them. And when they figure out that something bad can happen to them, you're at a crossroads and you can decide, am I going to go to this depressed side over here where I tell myself this ugly story about the world, or am I going to balance it out and realize that, yeah, the, the world is kind of harsh and ugly, but the world is also beautiful. So if I discover one day that I can get in a car accident and I never knew that before, does that mean that I'm going to park my car in my garage for the rest of my life and never get in my car? No, it just means I'm going to be careful. I'm going to recognize that there's a lot of benefits from driving, but it's also a dangerous activity. And and take the good with the bad and don't let yourself get all depressed and anxious about things. Well, that's good advice. All right, let's throw Andrew the trainer on. He looks like an interesting guy. Andrew, what's shaking? You got a question for us? Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, just finished, Sean, your book. Really great. And uh, Rich, been following you. you just probably the last six months or so. Really loving it. Um, I feel like I've been waking up over the last year or so. Primarily the last three months, though. I've, I'm in a long-term relationship with someone. It's been about two years now. And just really, you know, realizing what I want out of life and trying to figure out, you know, what are the things that are worth like working over and what are like, if it's just kind of like a cut it situation, I guess I should say. Okay. Would you um, see a pending train wreck coming? What's uh, yeah. Sure. So I guess as far as the train wreck goes, there's a lot of anxiety that this, uh, you know, individual is dealing with, um, and, or my girlfriend and, stuff, you know, as far as like building a family, um, having an, um, you know, I'd like to have kids at some day, not anytime soon, but uh, like a mom that's always anxious. Like, I don't feel like that shows a good sign to the kids. Um, and then also just like my own personal enjoyment. If I'm trying to go do something more spontaneous and I'm afraid that that's going to spark some anxiety. Um, now, with all that said, I've seen great growth over, you know, the two years. She used to be very anxious and, you know, I've helped her a bit and she's primarily done most of the work, you know, but I feel like I've been able to steer her in some of the right direction. So anxiety. So I guess right kind of, let me distill this a little bit. I'm seeing some um, some elements of growth, but I'm not sure I see all the elements of growth that I'm looking for in like a long term partner. What do you so what do you when you say long term partner, what are you looking for marriage and kids? Yeah, not not necessarily right now, um, but, you know, in the next five, 10 years, I think that that's something I'd like to attain. And if it weren't for this anxiety and these other issues, then she would be a candidate, but you're wondering if she's a candidate. Yeah, that's correct. You're seeing, you're seeing improvement, but it's not fast enough or it's not in enough areas or what, where is it that she's not improving? Yeah. Um, maybe more so the like open-mindedness, um, like sh she'll grow, but it almost seems like resentful at first, but then like she, she does like ultimate come back, like not all the time, but she'll be like, oh, you're right. You know, and I don't, is that just normal human nature? Like, I don't know. How old is she? 25. 
And how old are you? 23. 23. You said that like you were ashamed. Yeah. Huh. Why? Interesting. Really? Um, I don't know. I, I think I value the experience that older age uh, brings. And so I always feel like I'm not as experienced as I could be potentially. Okay. Is she, what's her intention? Is she trying to, um, is she trying to get a commitment out of you? Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely have talked about, you know, marriage and what that would look like coming. Um, and it, it, for a while, that's something I thought I wanted more soon, but after kind of reading, you know, and following you rich a lot more, I've realized that's not anything I'm prepared for at any time soon. So. All right. So what are the areas that she's not improving enough in? Uh, physical, well, being a trainer, you know, just being up for like more physical activities. And then when they're like suggested, just kind of like the complaining and like, you know, that goes along with that. Hang on a second. When you say the physical, is she fat? No, actually she's very fit for not exercising, which I'm aware of now. And I don't want that. I don't want her to potentially, you know, become fat in the future. What does she do? Uh, she just graduated. Is going to be a teacher. Mm. Hmm. So what are you doing in a relationship at 23 with a woman that's older? Than yeah. You know, that's something, um, you know, I think, uh, just, you know, growing up, that's kind of the mindset I was raised, you know, it's like, Oh, you find a girl that you like, you know, you, you become official or, you know, you become boyfriend and girlfriend and you just kind of do that. And if it doesn't work out, you jump to the next relationship. Obviously that's not, um, that's not as easy as that necessarily the same mindset. Person. Right, right, right. Uh, but obviously, you know, following you guys, that's not um, necessarily, I see the best way to go about it, but I am still in a relationship and I don't, I do value her, you know, so I don't know. I'm, I'm at a crossroads. <laughs> so, so what do you think is going to happen in like, like, let's say you wife her up. Okay. You know, you do the dutiful thing, mm -hmm. you do the ceremony, you slap a ring on it, you take her home, you put 2.1 yeah. in there. What do you think is going to happen in like five to six, seven years, you know, down the road with this anxiety and the problems you're seeing? What does the intuition say, Andrew? Um, it tells me that, like, I live a very adventurous and, like, purpose-driven life, I'd like to say. Or at least I'm trying to more and more. And that tells me that it could become an obstacle in, like, what I ultimately purpose in life. Travel, you know, uh, lots of people and friends being an intro extrovert and stuff like that. What does she like to do on the weekend? Uh, we both really enjoy like craft beer. Um, being that I'm fitness minded, I don't, you know, indulge in that too, too often. Um, and so beyond that, Netflix. Okay. So you have this very different, Cats. important it's, difference in values. Let's I, say I that, have, I have a lot, I have a lot of it. Yeah. Sorry. Keep yeah. going. Well, let's let's set aside for a moment Rich's very good point that at 23, that's pretty young to be talking marriage with somebody and she's older with you and, and that, that causes problems down the road. So let's set all that aside and pretend that all, all those things are gone. You two have this very important um, difference in values. It's actually been studied and there's this... Um, there's this wording that goes around it, power power motive versus affiliative motive. Power motive is somebody who wants to be out in the world. You are, you have a power motive. She has an affiliative motive, means she wants to stay home and watch Netflix. Fine, either one's fine. But these this particular yeah. value difference has been studied pretty closely, and it usually doesn't work out yeah. well when people have this difference. So you're wanting her to change into sure. something that, that she isn't, which is she's going to be out there yeah. traveling the world with you. She wants to teach classes with yeah. little kids and then watch Netflix. Yeah. It doesn't even sound like you have an yeah. alignment in your lifestyle choices either. I mean, uh, like, are you guys religious? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess you would call it that. I mean, that's not necessarily the same label I would put on it, but yeah, for well, it, time. Yeah. Like the reason why I'm asking is, you know, religion driving this relationship, yeah. the driving, you know, the marriage is a family pressure. Is it cultural? Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been abstinent for a while now, and recently I've been trying to figure out if that is ultimately still the purpose, or not purpose, but the way I want to, you know, go about my life, and that's kind of something I've been struggling over. And when you say abstinent, what do you mean by that? Not engaging in sexual contact. 
So you have a non-sexual relationship with a woman that you're talking about marrying. That's correct. Would you go to a car dealership and buy a car without driving it? I wouldn't. So why would you be in a relationship with a woman you're not sexual with? And I realize that's probably uh, breaking that's some religion boundaries yeah. somewhere, but it's a legitimate Right, question. right. No, yeah, it is a legitimate question. So how long have you guys been doing? So what would you say? So if I may ask, what uh, what would that exactly change? Because I, I have been intimate with people in the past. And so I know, obviously, I'm not as experienced as I could be. And there's a lot that could come with that. But at the end of the day, like, let's hypothetically say that I did know that our sexuality was compatible, hypothetically, obviously. Um, so sorry, just, but, just kind of back to my point. So how long have yeah. you guys been dating? Okay. Uh, two years now. And you've never slept together? Uh, <laughs> maybe. So you've banged, but you've decided not to bang. Yeah. Based on yeah, exactly. what? Uh, at the time, like religious convictions. Okay. So, I mean, sex usually feels pretty good for most people. Why would you stop banging? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm trying right. to get that around it. I'm, I'm, I don't subscribe. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Religion. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, totally. Good, so, uh, good. Well, just the way the rate. No, 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 no. I, for me, it was great, and I thought for her, it was good too. Um, obviously, women can fake it, but I, that didn't seem to be the uh, instance with us. And then um, it went on for a couple months, and then you know we became more official. And then she said, like, w wanted to be abstinent, you know, through till marriage. You know, if she wanted to have like a long term boyfriend. And that was at the time something I also wanted at a different level, right? Because there's there's core values, right? And that is a core value. But then I also like the physical, like pleasure, the dopamine rush, obviously. So it's like I'm balancing these two things at the same time. I'm just going to say exactly. I'm sorry, keep going. Yeah. I just want to sit back for a minute and let Sean hop on because I just want to get on this. I had, to, I had to step away for a minute because my little Irish wolfhound heard you say that you're thinking about marrying a woman you're not having sex with, and, and she got really upset I, about that. So I'm I had not, to go calm her down. Yeah. So, but you know, I don't mean to step on anyone's religious values. The reason that, that I am yeah. opposed to women, to couples not sleeping together when they're thinking about getting married is because that sexual incompatibility is one of the prime drivers of divorce. So if you can't get it straight before the marriage, then it's not, it's only going to get worse after the marriage. And, and, but why are we right. even talking about marriage? Like, what, what's this conversation about? You're 23, she's 25. What, I'm, I'm still kind of stuck on that point. She's and I don't mean to beat up on you. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm worried about you. No, 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 totally. And, totally. So I'm so sorry. Obviously, I just want to hop oh, yeah, in here I appreciate real quick. It. Thank you. No, yeah. Because this is sitting in your blind spot. She's also using sex to control the relationship. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's a free sample. Come and buy my shirt, but I'm going to take it away from you now, right? Yeah, like, like that's like that's controlling behavior. I mean, I would get it yeah. if you both have religious convictions that you know there's no sex before marriage, and you both agree not to do anything and do everything else, whatever you know you decide to do. But it's like if she's banged you, and then she says, no, let's stop banging because of religious convictions. I want to wait until we're married. It's like, holy crap, dude. Do you like? Do you see what's going on here? Yeah, Richard, are Not you picking exactly up on that's Andrew? The way I was Andrew, raised. hang on, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Rich is picking up on what I'm picking up on here, which it just feels like you're feels like you're being okay. dragged down a path that you don't really want to be are going. You, down. Are you your own mental point of origin? Answer that question. Yeah. No, definitely. you're not. Bullshit. Are you controlling the frame of the relationship? Okay. Ye well, as far. Yes, but not sex. But as far as she knows, we're both not wanting sex. Well, not that we don't want it, but we're both waiting for sex, right? And I would say only for the you, last okay, two stop, months. Stop. You've you've all heard me say yeah. that their masters are complicating their lives and then justifying why they do it. I just want you to yeah. think about that phrase a few yeah. times when you kind of answer questions okay. like that, because that's what you're doing. It's like, well, you know, yeah. she kind of takes away the sex, but I control everything else. And, but I still can't do the athletic. Sure. I really like, cause she wants to Netflix and chill. I mean, you got like, dude, this has got train wreck written all over it. This is a walk away. As far as I'm concerned, spin more plates, do your thing, make yourself your own mental point of origin. This chick's controlling you, man. You know, for her to bang yeah. you and then take that away and say, no, I want to wait until I'm married. 
and she's older than you. I mean, she's I mean, she's about to hit her epiphany phase where she's going to be like, well, now that I'm a teacher and I've been teaching for two years, and if I get married at 27, and I pop out my 3.1 kids, then I'll be 32 by the time the last one comes out. Like she's going to rationalize all this shit. And then you're going to hear the story about it. And then she, and you're going to be like, OK, let's go get married and do that then. Right. Like that's exactly what's going to happen. I've seen I've seen this movie before. I know how it ends. Sure. Right. This is the path yeah. that you're going down. Andrew, let me ask you a question. Before you called in, was there some little voice in the back of your head that was saying, I'm getting dragged down a path that I'm not sure I want to go down? Um, so for a while, I was feeling that way. But recently, I told her like, hey, you know, I'm not actually that happy. Um, I want like more physicality out of our relationship, not necessarily going up to sex, but, you know, just more. Now you're and trying to negotiate with her. Now you're trying to negotiate with her. You cannot negotiate yeah. desire yeah. with a woman. It has to be organic. It has to be natural. She has to want to jump your bones and bang the shit out of you, right? But yeah. now you're having conversations about when you're going to execute totally. that. I don't know if you can see the comment on this. At a point, that just, this is why religion is a control mechanism over men now. He's writing his fourth book on this. So right. don't do anything before you read that yeah. book. Don't, don't do anything with her going forward. Be my sure. advice. Like, next, that shit. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. I think that we've covered this pretty intensely. Sean, you want to say any final words to Andrew before? You yeah, if you if you wouldn't mind, I ask one real quick. Oh, yeah, sorry, Sean, you go first. No, I, I said what I need to say. I'm worried oh, okay. about you. Go um, ahead. We're both worried. So, like, at what at what point? So there. So you're telling me that there is a woman out there that will just like want to bang me all the time because I feel like once you're married and you're living in the same house, like you just get like uh, what is it, palate fatigue, right? Like don't don't get married until you figure out exactly what female nature is all about because you're asking a question that you should have the answer to before you even think about co contemplating marriage or doing anything long term with a woman because you're going to make some really bad choices entering it uh, like entering that relationship entering a marriage with that with that baseline mindset you're going to make bad choices that are going to lead to a bad marriage that are potentially going to lead to a bad divorce for you right and that's very costly for men you should you should know what um what desire is all about. You should know what arousal cues are versus attraction cues. And all that stuff, dude, like, I mean, watch the stuff that, you know, uh, is, is, is getting put out by the real content creators that really understand this stuff. There's a lot yeah. of dumbass guys out there that are telling you just to buy your dinner and take her out dancing. And that is the stupidest fucking thing that you could be doing. Cause it's what a lot of dumb totally. guys subscribe to that. And they'll, and they'll end up doing that and then they'll go and drop her off and then she'll call up Chad or Tyrone and he'll come over at one o'clock for the booty call to take care of the sex part and she's not banging you. And I want you to be that guy. I want you to be the guy that 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 like gives her the gene, you know, Gina tingles and you're not because you've put yeah. yourself in a position where you've allowed her to turn you into a plow horse and you haven't even gotten married to her. Mm. Right? You are her bitch and you're yeah. not even married to her. Yeah, I mean, that is simplifying it a little bit, though, because, like, shared incredible moments and times, like, beyond just, like, the physical, right? Yeah, blah, 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 you're not banging. Yeah, but, I mean, even in a marriage, that's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but nothing. You're not banging. You're not in control of the frame of the relationship. She's yeah. running the show. She's yeah. older than you. Go back and watch the segment. It's about a 10-minute segment. I want you to watch it a okay. couple of times on the recording. Because there's so much value, yeah. in, and read the chat comments because a lot of guys chime in there too. There's lots of good stuff. Totally. So, okay, Andrew. Cool. Thanks, brother. Oh man, hmm. I need to take a. I'm worried about that guy, man. Yeah, I, I don't have a good feeling about that. No, he's like he. He's, yeah, he's not ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not ready for that bitter taste of the truth of the red pill and he's still subscribing to old societal conditioning that is not going to serve him. Yeah. He's, he's missing the red pill component. He's also missing the blue pill component. What I mean by that is that he's a guy who wants to get married and there's good data out there about what makes marriages work and what doesn't it's, you know, it's, it's not all very, it's not all very enlightened in terms of female nature, but there's still some good data out there. So if you want to get married, read the manual, read the, read the blue pill stuff. In addition to the red pill stuff, he's missing out on, on, you know, some basic things about shared values. It, the problem, the problem with religion and yeah, I'm not a religious guy. So I know a lot of you guys are a religious guy, is that it's a beta factory. And this is exactly what you, what, ends up coming out of the beta factory is guys like this that it's just like they enter her frame she sets all these rules 
he he toes a line and then one day she's like let's go get married and let's have some epic sex and he's like okay because he's been sex star for like you know his entire life or you know he's been operating in her frame he thinks all of a sudden well if he goes and does a dutiful thing he's going to get regular consistent you know like like wicked ass sex and it's not going to happen he looked confused as as you were talking to him like, yeah he he looked kind of stunned and i hope I hope and pray since we're on a religious theme here that he will sit with that confusion and not try to push it away with a bunch of words and stories. This is true. All right. We got a bunch of other people still waiting on here. Let's give uh, Anthony a stab at this. Anthony, you're up. There. Oh, nice. Um, hi, uh, Rich and John. How are you doing? Good. Hey, I um, actually, uh, I have an experience I want to share that uh, uh, like last year I was watching the Rich's videos that kind of helped me. Uh, I feel dodging bullet. Um, so uh, I was uh, interested in uh, getting a marriage contract or a uh, prenup agreement. So uh, kind of a little bit well-versed now. Well, not, I'm not a lawyer or anything, but uh, I think the experience could uh, be useful for your viewers who are is considering a marriage contract or a prenuptial agreement. Okay, so, five minutes for the show. Oh, so, um, <laughs> so essentially, uh, I, uh, I, I was like kind of contemplating it with my... Uh, uh, my uh, my soon to be ex spouse actually and uh, and we uh, ended up seeing a family law lawyer before we got married and essentially the uh, lawyer kind of viewed our uh, net assets and such and uh, what we made uh, in income and if there'd be spousal support if we were uh, to get married and such so I was weighing more in on uh, protecting my my pension for example and uh, <clears throat> she uh, <laughs> she unfortunately didn't like that and. Uh, First, she kind of agreed when we went for our first session with a family law lawyer. And then uh, uh, the, the lawyer kind of said, well, if you get married and you decide to uh, still go after a prenuptial uh, agreement, uh, which you can do, at least in uh, my province, uh, the loss wouldn't be so bad. But uh, of course, as you're, for me being the higher income in my, my situation, and uh, it would, uh, kind of accumulate over time where if we were to divorce, I would have a bigger equalization payout. So they're talking about a post-nuptial agreement, right? You get married first and then you and then well, you do the post-nup after you get married? So yeah, you can still do it even when you are married. At least yeah, I see. In my problem, you, you can. Uh, if she's willing to do it after, why not just do it that, before? That's just it. For, beforehand, she said, oh, I, I just want to focus on the wedding. Let's uh, just focus on that and we can kind of you know, tease it out afterwards. But after the uh, the wedding didn't quite work out. <laughs> I think I tried to sell me a car like that one time. Yeah. So uh, prior to that, so uh, I was really kind of trying to push the agenda of the marriage contract, just to at least pr pr protect my pension. That was a big goal. I think I was kind of looking at like, you know, that was a red flag from one of Rich's videos. He kind of explained like, oh, you know, if you want to vet women, you can ask her to buy you a coffee at Tim Hortons or something like that. And one that was like, well, ask about it. like just bring it up through like casual conversation and marriage contract. And she was interested in it. And we, you know, they go through that stuff there. But when I got down to the nitty gritty, we didn't uh, uh, sadly didn't go through uh, with it there. So after about two months of marriage and uh, me pushing that, she <laughs> she sadly started thinking that uh, I committed infidelity, and that's why I won the marriage contract. And then things kind of got worse uh, over time. She. Uh, she sadly also suffered from anxiety and took uh, anxiety medications there. And she was kind of worried that if she stopped, you know, if she keeps continuing taking these anxiety medications that uh, she, uh, if we were to decide to have children in the future, it could cause birth defects and such. So she decided to uh, say, okay, well, I want to try either a naturopathic way or some, you know, try to wean off of it so much there. And uh, sadly that wasn't, uh, you know, the, the best choice on her part. Uh, what ended up happening uh, over time was uh, she started kind of, you know, really getting anxious over uh, you know, my th things that would happen on my phone, for example. Like, I know how we got, you guys talked about, uh, you know, if she wants, you know, if she checks your phone, if that's okay. In my situation, not so much. She was just kind of looking for trouble and she'd find, you know, some things that she would uh, think were suspicious, but in reality, they were not. And I would, you know, have to explain to her and such. And then, uh, <laughs> I was still at you know, this point there, I was like debating whether pushing the marriage contract, but then because I brought it up, I think she just, her anxiety just kind of flared up thinking that, you know, I did like something, like something happened with me that I cheated on her. And so she was checking everything like my Facebook messenger. So, uh, uh, any of my previous messages, she talked to some 
some of my friends there to see what, what I'd be up to, like in, you know, uh, at work, for example, or like you know, if, if I'm socializing with friends. So it got really weird. And so we went to counseling over this actually, and I said, okay, this you know needs to be addressed. <laughs> and uh, the counselor kind of said, like, well, you know, she has these anxieties, and uh, there's only so much I can do is you know uh, to address it, and uh, that she should probably still consider going back on her anxiety medication. And so sadly, she didn't. And then at that point, I called for a separation. And when I called for a separation, that's when all hell broke loose. <laughs> so essentially, the separation. I thought, okay, well. Hopefully this will clear some things, but it didn't really. It uh, more or less actually got her to uh, start telling everybody that I was an abuser, just like these false allegations of abuse uh, that I, you know, it's just ridiculous. Uh, she even uh, went as far as like bring it to, yeah, no, exactly, right? She brought it to the uh, workplace and uh, sadly uh, she was a colleague of mine. I actually, I know I you know, don't, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't have uh, dated someone in the workplace. I actually helped her get a job in my uh, workplace, to be honest. But it, it was a large employer. It's, it's about there's 20,000 people. Thank God she works at a different building uh, per se. But she brought that in the workplace. Uh, she told people in my workplace that you know her marriage was uh, breaking down because I abused her, or I uh, I also I cheated on her, things like that. And at that point, we've only been married two months, so people were. Kind of worrying what what the heck are you guys doing? <laughs> you know what's going on, and uh, so I got wind of this by my other colleagues, and I ended up you know making a report to my management and such there, uh, and uh, just kind of you know stop the wildfire from spreading and then causing issues for me at work. Sorry, Anthony, <laughs> and uh, Anthony, it got worse. Anthony, Sorry, Anthony. let me just hop in here to try to yeah get, just get this thing moving on. Um, do you have earphones by the way? Because we're getting feedback sure. from your speakers, or maybe just turn down your speakers a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, sure. No um, problem. So you guys got separated. You're no longer together. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and um, and so uh, this is more of an experience share you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, so what I was going to kind of uh, share in terms of uh, so because we were only uh, married for two months, uh, the equalization payment that I had to uh, you know apply for for a separation agreement mm -hmm. was very minimal. Uh, yeah. In fact, even like for spousal support, it was just not worth her to actually go to court. Um, right. And uh, for for my equalization payment, it was uh, pretty much that the assets I brought in at the marriage and the assets I exited at the marriage. So my, over two months at the time, my assets only grew like $2,000. Uh, oh, you were lucky. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Even my, my family law lawyer kind of said, well, we saw the count cancer and uh you know, just in time, and we removed it uh, there before it got any worse. And so, it, even from like you know, complaining at work, she wanted to try to go ahead and make uh, a police complaint uh, against me. And the police, thank God, were professional, and they interviewed me and they interviewed her, and they kind of like told me, you know, like, yeah, you know, her her story seems a little far fetched. Uh, and then they ended up dropping the investigation, thankfully. So yeah, this even myself and a professional. Happen if you marry a chick with anxiety issues, then. Yeah, no, exactly. It's yeah, there's there's more than right. anxiety going on there. And she lost me. She lost me the minute she said, "Hey, let's get married and we'll sort out the legal details later." Yeah, oh, thank you. Like there's like there's <laughs> more red flags here than a Chinese communist parade. I mean, this is the this is the chick that has more red flags than anything that I've heard this entire show tonight. Probably, uh, she did you a huge favor. You know, you got out, you're free and clear. It could have been worse, dude. I mean, you could have had a couple of kids and, you know, tried to work it out, you know, for the last six or seven years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, thanks for sharing that. But um, you're out. So congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, man. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Let's drop him from the stream uh, real quick before we wrap up. So I guess, you know, this actually worked out pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if guys in the comments below, let me know if you want me to try to get the call in system working or if the stream lab setup is working. It, it seemed to work out well enough. People could join it. Um, I should shout out real quick. Let me see if I can, how does this work? Oh, there we go. I should shout out real quick to the channel sponsor, um, tactical sub company. The link is below right over here. I like how that works. Um, if you check out with coupon code Cooper, you get 10% off. It's coopersoap.com. Pheromone infused handmade soap and beard oil right there. It's a good stuff. I've been using it for a while. That's why you get the majestic beard here on myself, but, um, Check it out, guys. Helps us uh, support the creation of content on the show. 
Um, Sean, we are scheduled for next Monday on the 19th. Um, you good to do a show then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll, I'll be off on the 26th. I got a, a daddy daughter, daddy, a trip. Let's just say a trip lined up. So, um, we'll leave that night open, but we're definitely back next, uh, Monday for another show. And uh, I see room 101 in the chat there. And he had an interesting question that, uh, maybe we can talk about next week about when do you not break up with a girlfriend who's trying to improve? Yeah. Um, my answer would be when this forward progress. <laughs> Yeah, but he, we chatted a little bit, he and I, about a situation where he's seeing some forward progress, but he's not sure what's sufficient and what's not. And I yeah. thought it was an interesting topic. All right, so let's make that the topic of next week's show. So uh, again, thanks for checking it out today, guys. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to like it, so smash that like button and share this somewhere. Um, somebody needs to check it out. We're on episode 31 next week, so appreciate you guys uh, tuning in today. We'll see you guys later. Peace. All right.